boy, it's a great day for football. You can see the sun going down behind us. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show live from Minneapolis. Jordan, we've never said that before. This is Wayne Viner. Jordan Viner, who's also happy about a North Dakota State win at South Dakota State. You guys are number one. Our Maryland Terrapins fall. Is it 52 to 10? 52 to it's 10. Still up on the score. To the Golden Gophers. Um, it's hard to categorize this loss for me, actually, because Minnesota, actually, on paper, there ain't no, they may be the best team in the Big Ten West, but for some reason, a lot of Maryland fans expected to compete in this game, and maybe we shouldn't have. Maybe we shouldn't have that. That is tough to take, Jordan. Um, uh, we thought we had a chance. We thought we could run the ball. There was a lot of thinking going on. None of those thoughts proved out today. But I was just on the postgame show on 105.7. And I had had to point out that the, in the first half, the offense gave up 14 points. A ball hit Dante Demas, went through his hands. It was returned about the 25. A few minutes later, Minnesota scores. Another throw to Demas, once again, hit him in both hands. The ball pops up in the air. It's returned down that sideline for a touchdown. The offense gave the defense no help. I know a lot of people look at the overall stats, say the defense was horrible, and the defense gave up, was it 8 of 11 on third down? Uh, 7, I believe. But they had a lot of help. Maryland's biggest problem is when anything goes wrong, they tend to, they don't have the resiliency that you need to play at this level because things are going to go wrong. It doesn't mean that that's it for the game. No, this team seems to, as Loxley put it, play the circumstance a lot, and uh, it's it's hard to, again, I think it's hard to quantify this game because, yeah, once we fall down as a program, as a team at least this year, we, we're not getting back up, and I think that if that is really the case, then this is a 3-9 and nine team. I don't think you can play from ahead and be a good football team in this conference. And that may sound a little bit harsh, but that's kind of where I am. I have lowered my expectations for this team at this point. I don't see us as a team that can be bill eligible. No, no. And we've said on several of these podcasts, six wins is done. Now the only question is, can we beat, I would say it's Nebraska. And yeah. maybe, maybe not. Other than that, it's three and nine, but we had a great start. So Maryland football, not much to talk about. This is a nice stadium. You see on the scoreboard, if you can see it, I think Jordan's head might be in the way. But their next game, Penn State at night. Step back in here. We've had a Penn State at night. Right now it's TVA, but I would expect undefeated Penn State, undefeated Minnesota. The game will be here Sunday, Saturday, November 9th. A lot of people here are looking forward to that one, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and I can't blame them. They should be in the top 15 by then. If you're a Minnesota fan, this is the best season you've had in decades. And Minnesota and Penn State, for some reason, I actually don't know why, is a rivalry game. Um, and I hope they do better than we did. I like Minnesota as a program. I think P.J. Flex should be, is uh, probably in the top five for the coach of the year at this point. Um, they're having a great season. I don't hold this against them. Uh, go Gophers, hopefully. Maybe they can get a surprise bid in the Big Ten, in the college football playoff at this point even. All right, well, they do lead the Big Ten West by two, two games. full games. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. We'll be back here in Minneapolis in a moment. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jackler's Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck, yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information and find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1 right now. So if Mason was here, and welcome back, friends. If Mason was here, he would point out that every time it seems that Maryland gets on ESPN, on ABC, a nationally televised game, this happens. The bad thing about Maryland is he's right. This keeps happening. The good thing about Maryland is no matter how bad they have been, they keep getting these chances to pull off that win. That win the TCU had today. That win that your former coach, your guy Kleinman, had at Kansas State today over Oklahoma. Uh, 
the opportunities are still here. We get Michigan at noon next Saturday. It's homecoming, and of course, that's on ABC. Yeah, um, you keep getting these chances for what you call program building wins, like TCU had today, like Kansas State most certainly had today. But I just I don't see us capitalizing on them this season. I think when you play programs and teams that are better than you, you need to. It's the same thing I said earlier. You have to be able to get off the mat and punch back. And maybe if you get after a hot start against Michigan, because I keep saying Michigan's not very good, and I still stand by that. Maybe you can get a nice win against them, but. I don't know how much it's really going to count because I expect them to get a bit straight by Notre Dame today. But, hey, you beat Michigan at home. That's still something. Oh, that'd be huge. That'd be that huge. would be huge at this point. Again, we're back to where we were before Indiana. For Maryland to stay in the game would be huge. Uh, bad news today. I think Piggy uh, really messed up his uh, – his left knee? His left knee, yeah. His left knee. Chance Campbell looked like he had a knee injury, but he got back in the game. Key Ryan Howard, uh, defensive lineman, wears number 59. Looks like he had a knee injury. Not sure. Loxley, nor any of the team representatives, had spoken to the trainers when they did the postgame press conference. Um, not much good to say about Maryland. They get out gained 498 yards to 210. 200 yards plus on the ground for the Gophers. And actually, I think they crossed 300. Um, Did they? Rush, you're right. It's 321 yards on the ground, 177 in the air. Not much more to say other than it was a great place to visit. It's a great stadium. Even though the stadium was 75% full, they had a great atmosphere here, too. It was really cool. The people are really nice. And that's the best we can say out of this trip to Minneapolis. We will see you on the radio. Trip Talk on 1300 CBS Sports Radio on Wednesdays, the Sports Maven. Also, 1300 CBS Sports Radio, Saturday mornings at 9. Jordan, you're on the Young Terps. When are you going to put out the next podcast? Um, Probably either Sunday night or Monday we'll get into it. I'm sure Mason and I will have a lot to say about this one. Um, Also, if you're an ESPN Plus subscriber, you can catch Mason calling Jacksonville Volleyball at 1 p.m. Eastern. So if you get ESPN Plus, check him out. It's his TV debut. Yeah, Mason. I mean, to, to end up being the number one guy for Jacksonville University sports, he's calling football, he's going to do the play-by-play for baseball, and he makes his debut on ESPN National, debut Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern, 12 o'clock Central. Even if you don't like volleyball, check out intern Mason. He's going big time on us. For Young Terp Jordan Viner, I'm Wayne Viner. Good evening from Minneapolis, where Maryland falls 52 to 10.